little yarnivores and spiderettes, Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. And today I'm going to show you how to create what I call the Modern Granny Donut Cowl. Now the stitch is the Modern Granny Stitch. Now the form I like to call a donut cowl because it's not just a cylindrical shape, but it's a tube cylindrical shape like a donut. Very, very simple, and it is a join-as-you-go technique. No sewing required for this particular you know, design. Absolutely love it. It's so fast, so easy. It's fabulous. Now, for this particular piece, I used... Doo -doo -doo -doo, this was Red Heart Super Saver Ombre. Now, this colorway was the violet. This, to give you an example, this is the anthracite, for those of you that are not familiar. Uh, it's 100% acrylic. This video is not sponsored, by the way. And it is doo -doo 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 -doo, 482 yards. Now, to give you an idea, I had this much left over of one skein. So you can totally make one with one skein, no problem. And I absolutely love this design. Now, what I mean as far as it being a donut, let me just show you real quick what I am talking about. You know, you can, of course, make this a single thickness project by all means, if that's what you want. But if you want double thickness, you can do that. So as you can see, it is like a donut. It's sort of a flat donut, but it's nice and toasty. Now, as far as the, the joining is concerned, it's almost invisible. This ridge right here is where I did the joining. It's practically seamless. Absolutely love it. And of course, you can have that on the inside of your donut if you so wish. And the reason why I like the double thickness is because you can sort of foof around your project so it's not just sitting, you know, on your shoulders around your neck. I really, really, really like this. And it's so quick. Mm. Now, also, for this particular yarn and this particular stitch, I used a size I 5.5 milliliter hook to go along with my weight of four yarn. You can, of course, use what works best for you, whatever yarn, whatever hook size. Have fun with that. So, without further ado, let's get started. Hello again. All right, so for this particular demo, I'm going to be using, this is Pound of Love in the colorway of wheat. And same size hook, that would be the size I, 5.5 millimeter hook. Again, use whatever it is that you want to. Now, as far as sizing goes, well, for the piece that I was wearing just before, I chained, it was a total of 90 chains. However, you can make this project as big or as small as you want to. So all you need is a multiple of three chains. So for the one that I was wearing, I had 90 chains. For this little swatch, if you will, I did 30 chains. As long as it's divisible by three, you are good to go. So... I already have my 30 chains right here. For a, a an adult size, yeah, you're going to need more than 30, but I just want to show you how easy this process is. So after you have your multiple of three, we're going to join this together and we're going to work in the round. By the way, I didn't mention it before, this is only a two round repeat. So yeah, you can thank me later. <laughs> All right, so after you have your multiple of three, you're going to join it. Now, you don't want to twist this, otherwise it's going to become a Mobius. You do not want a Mobius, not for this project anyway. So make sure that the, the chain is not twisted. And we're going to go into that first chain. Now, it really, in this case, it really does not matter if you go underneath the back bump or underneath both loops. Going underneath the 
the back loop, you know, of, of the V, the back one, that's totally fine. Because when we do our join, it's going to be pretty much hidden anyway. So slip stitch that first chain. And so now we've got ourselves a ring. So for the first round, chain up one and single crochet into that first stitch, like so. Right in that same set, well, same stitch right there. So then chain three, skip two chains, and then into that third chain, single crochet. And it would help if I went underneath the, the right loop, wouldn't it? There we go. Okay, chain three. Skip two chains into the third chain, single crochet. And we're gonna do this all the way around chain three. Skip two chains into the third chain, single crochet, chain three, skip two chains, third chain, single crochet. There we go. Chain three. Skip two chains, third chain, single crochet. And so forth all the way around. Now you may need to fiddle a little bit as far as the number of chains. And also, you might not want quite so many as I had if it's just going to be a, a single thickness. But if you're doing a donut, the double thickness, then you really might want more chains so that it can foof out more. One, two, three. Skip two chains, third chain. There we go. Chain three. Okay, and we are at the end of the road. So skip those two chains and then slip stitch into that first single crochet that we made. And then slip stitch into the chain three space. And then pull your tail end through. And so, yeah, obviously this is not going to be big enough for a finished project, but for swatching, it's not bad. All right, so onwards to the second round. Okay, so for the second round, we already slip stitched into the single and into the chain three space. From here, chain up three, two more double crochets, into that chain three space. So that chain up three does count as a double crochet. So we've got three doubles, then chain one, three doubles into the next space. Chain one, three doubles into the next space. and so on and so forth. Chain one, three doubles into the next space. Chain one, three doubles into the next space. Pull out a little bit more yarn. That's two. And three, chain one, three doubles into the next space. 
Now, as far as different colorways, now this right now that I'm using, it is a solid colorway. Um, I think ombres would look great, even better. If you had a variegated yarn um, with not like a really long colorway change, like uh, Karen Cakes Mandawa, I think I might, I think it might be a little too long of a colorway. Something of a shorter colorway change, like, give me one second here. Sort of like the the ice cream, uh, the Big Scoops ice cream by Lion Brand. It's a shorter colorway change, um, so it'll create some interesting stripes. But if you're using, say, a variegated yarn with a very quick change uh, colorway, then it might look a little muddy. Okay, so I did my chain one, three doubles. Another alternative would be to use two colors and alternate back and forth, but you would probably have either a lot of ends to sew in or a uh, sort of like a carrying up tail, which I'm not a huge fan of. So play around, you know, have fun experimenting. Considering how easy and quick these are, go for it, you know, have some fun. All right. And we are almost to the beginning of the round. Okay, just one more. So chain one, three doubles in the chain three space. Okie dokie. Okay, so then chain one and into the first double crochet that chaining of three that we did, slip stitch into the top of that first double. Come on, thank you. And then slip stitch into the next two doubles. Just sort of going to scoot our way to the next chain space. And then into that chain space, slip stitch. And there you go. We are ready for the next round. Okay. Okie dokie. So for the third round, which is, we're basically repeating the first round. So chain up one, single crochet into that same chain one space, chain three, and then single crochet into the next chain one space all the way around. Chain three, single into the next space, chain three, single into the next space, chain three, single in the next space, and so on and so forth. Just do your chain three, and single into the next space. So as you can see, this really is quite easy and it's one of those great projects. If you wanna have sort of a, a mindful moment and you don't wanna to have to agonize over a pattern and you need something for a quick gift for somebody you love or a gift for yourself, hey, give yourself presents, why not? Um, <laughs> you know, this is a perfect project and so we are approaching the end here of the round already. It's that fast. Granted, this is a small piece. Chain three. And then slip stitch into that first single crochet that we made. Then slip stitch into the next chain three space. And then we are ready for the next round, which I'm gonna do right now. Chain up three two more doubles, chain one, three doubles in the next chain three space, chain one, three doubles in the next chain three space, and that's really all there is to it. It's so easy, and 
typically I do like the more traditional granny stitch. However, this is definitely more toasty because it's not, the holes aren't quite so pronounced and big and the, the stitches are aligned with each other and it is also double thickness. So we have a lot of winning features for us today. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okie dokes. So you just keep going in this fashion, repeating these two rounds over and over and over until your piece is big enough. Now, if you want the, the single thickness, you don't have to do quite so many rounds. However, yeah, if you want the double thickness, it has to be twice as long because it's going to be doubled in half. And then I get the, the fun part of showing you how you can join your donut. It's really, really quite simple. Utilizing some slip stitches in the right places, it works beautifully. Okie doke, and I think we're almost there. Yep, we are. Okay. Chain one and then slip stitch to the top of our first double slip stitch and slip stitch into the next two stitches and then slip stitch into the chain one space, chain up one, single crochet into that first stitch, chain three, single in the next chain one space, chain three, single into the next space. And really this is all there is to it. So yeah, just keep repeating these two rows over and over and over. And now what I did, let me see if I can find my notes here. There we go. Okay, what I did was, so I, I change, chained, excuse me, I chained 90 and I did 17 cluster rounds. Now, what I mean by a cluster round, it's not the, the chain round, but this, this is the, the cluster round, okay? So I did 17 rounds of the, the cluster round, and then I ended on a, a chain round. And then the following round, the joining round, which was going to be what, what, uh, round 18, okay, that is the round where I did the joining and I felt that my piece was big enough. So if you want to follow my example, you know, specifically, chain 90, do your join, do 17 cluster rounds, and then finish off with one of these chain rounds, and then you will be all set for the join. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on this a little bit more off camera and I'll show you how you can do the joining. All right. I'll see you in a bit. Okay. So I made my piece a little bit bigger. Now at this point, you're going to do your join. As I said before, you're going to want to end after doing one of your chain rounds. Okay. And so pretend, let's play pretend that I did my chaining of 90 and I did my 17 rounds of the, the cluster rounds. So now at this point, what we need to do is we need to feed this bottom edge through the piece. You know, we're, we're going to get a little wormy here. So feed the bottom through and sometimes it's easier if you pull it through the top. So 
So basically pulling, pulling it inside out, but not completely. No, 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 not completely. So this is our working yarn. This is where we're currently at. But yes, this is where we started. So it's inside out, but not completely inside out. We're, we're going to leave a bit of a cuff, if you will. Okay. So then take this same edge where we started, and then you fold it down on itself. Once again, creating another cuff. Like so. So basically, we're going to be joining this edge and this edge together with the next round. Okay? So yeah, it looks a little bit wonky, but not to worry. We will fix that momentarily. And then after we do this joining, you can then turn this whole thing inside out like this. And there you go. <laughs> All right, so let's do that joining round together. All righty, so now one thing to keep in mind, though, is that are the, the clusters, because they do stack on top of each other, if they're not aligned, it really does not matter because you're going to be turning this thing inside out anyway, so it doesn't matter. So where we left off, we did our chain round, our slip stitch into the single crochet, and then a slip stitch into the chain three space. So we need to work our clusters. So chain up three, two more double crochets into that chain three space. Now we have the join. Now what I found to be what worked the best for me is Initially, what I was trying to do was go into the bottom of where we had our single crochet. Honestly, I didn't think that looked really neat. So what I figured out instead is, so we have our, this was our first cluster. So that's our, our chain three double crochet. If you go in between here with your hook, and do a slip stitch. Now this seems a little bit bulky, but I found, yes, it does work. So what we're going to do, let me just get my tail out of the way here. Going to go in from the front to the back and slip stitch. We're going to do this a couple of times, so do not worry. So slip stitch around that whole thing. Okay and then into the next chain three space, do three more doubles. Now you can do that, right? There we go. So three doubles. I'm working on another project where I'm using a lot of double trebles, so I have to remind myself every now and then. All right, so then into the next space. So again, it's up here, this space right here. So going through there, this space in between your clusters. So through and slip stitch and then go into the next chain three space with three doubles. Slip stitch into the next space. Three doubles into the next chain three space. Slip stitch into the next space up top. Three 
three doubles into the chain three space down below. As soon as I don't do that, I want to show you how it looks so far. I know it's a little bit fiddly, but if it means that we don't have to do any sewing, it's worth it. Okay, so this edge right here is where we did our join. And I think it looks lovely. Mm. It's practically seamless. It's like it's got a little bit of a raised look, but otherwise it is seamless. All right, so let's keep going, shall we? Okay, so slip stitch into that next space. Three doubles down below into that chain three space. Slip stitch up above. Come on. What am I doing here? There we go. Yes, I too can be wonky. I am not exempt. <laughs> okay, and then slip stitch up above. Three doubles down below. Slip stitch above. Three doubles down below. Pull out some more yarn. Slip stitch above. Three doubles down below. And we are just about there. So going to slip stitch above and then to finish this up because right here is the first cluster that we did down below. So then after slip stitching above here, slip stitch into the top of your first clusters double crochet yeah, here we go and at that point you can then cut your yarn pull out your tail and sew in your ends so it's right here that we created that ridge that join and it is awesome absolutely positively and then of course when you are completely finished sewing in your ends just be sure that you're not sewing your layers together when you're doing so yeah you can then turn your piece inside out and you are done it makes a great cowl great neck warmer just something generally to keep you nice and toasty woasty mm -hmm. yeah so listen, folks, I hope you liked this tutorial. Uh, and if you did, please do give a little thumbs up button down below. You know I appreciate your appreciation. And I love coming up with new techniques and projects for you guys. So until next time, you know what to do. I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated, stay stitching, and please stay safe. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you in my next video. Have a great day, everybody, and bye for now.